Hi, I'm Anup Stein. Uh, we're back for part two of the interview with Infamous Commonwealth about their production of The Crucible. Um, now, when, when I was watching The Crucible, one of the things that I was sort of struck by as I was watching it was uh, how uh, sort of overtly political it was as a response to the activities of the House and American Activities Committee in uh, 1953 when it was sort of premiered. Um, and I was thinking about it in terms of other sort of plays that are, uh, are very political, and one of the things that really struck me about it was how completely detached, like there's not a trace of that actual political event in the play, it just completely speaks to the, the sort of larger issues that it's dealing with, the issues of, of like censorship and of belief and sort of law and rule of law and jury and like trust. And I was wondering maybe if you could speak a little bit to um, sort of those issues in the play and, and how you dealt with them. Well, you know, I, I think that's why this play is still being done and, and so many other plays with a, a political bent aren't being done, you know, because he does such an amazing job of, you know, yes, he did write this in response to the McCarthy hearings, etc. But, you know, you, you bring a high school student in now and you don't tell them that, they're not going to know that because it's just a damn good play. And, you know, I. I've, I've continually thought this play is, you know, both timely and it's timeless because it, so it's working on these two different levels. And I think what's really fantastic about it is, you know, any era you can really just latch on to it and say, you know, this is a, this is a play about my time, you know, and it's what this is a play that's you know, fifty plus years old, and you know, we're still talking about. Oh well, I mean, just even right now, you can take a look at, uh, you know, you could. If you really wanted to, you could say, well, you know, you could certainly draw a, a parallel to what's happened with the healthcare debate and the Tea Party movement. I mean, you know, there's this this fervent, you know, outcry uh, against healthcare, and, and then when you ask them why, they don't really have a good answer as to why. I mean, it, it's just the fervor of it, uh, and I, I think that's that's sort of what's happening here. Um, so. I, you know, but and, and even what something else that I find fascinating is, I mean, Danforth almost verbatim at one point in, in, in the third act uses the phrase, you're either with us or against us. I mean, that's, you know, that's profound. I mean, you know, Miller certainly didn't envision, you know, George W. Bush, you know, uh, flying onto that aircraft carrier, and yet in the fourth act, you know, Danforth might as well be pulling down a mission accomplished sign because it's just so like, you know, it's it's just this fascinating uh, parallel, and then and you, I suspect that this play is going to be done in a hundred years. You know, because and, and it, I I I also think it goes back to this you know this idea of, of the the dialogue you know being you know modern, but it's also uh, classical enough to where it takes you to a time that it it, does, it feels distant, but yet the the topics are are so you know kind of elementary and. and Elemental, and, and then you know, it, it's just people are people, and they're always going to behave the same way. I, I suspect. Uh, and then, just sort of one final wrap-up question: Do you sure. have any any sort of moments that have been long-standing favorites, or moments that have uh, stood out for you in this production? I guess both of you. Start um, <clears throat> I, for me, it's any moments uh, between John and Elizabeth, just because I mean, uh, they're probably the moments I'm able to personalize the most, and, and uh, Jen Matthews and I have, have worked together for a number of years, and, and uh, to get to play her husband again, and an adulterous husband at that. <laughs> We've done that before, but um, but uh, she's just an amazing actress, and so, you know, from a, an actor's perspective, it's those. Um, but but as rehearsals have gone on, and now that the show is open, and, and uh, the final redemption in Act 4 has um, turned into what it has become, that's certainly become... Uh, probably my favorite moment aside from those just because it's it was a, a discovery that took me a while to make with Chris and and once I did uh, I feel like the redemption is really there now um, well I, I think the whole play is terrific uh, <laughs> uh, no I mean I, I, I that me yeah there are there are, are bits and moments uh, I, I I have always been in very fond. Uh, since I read this play in high school, I've always been fond of the scene in the second act between 
John Elizabeth and Reverend mm -hmm. Hale. I, I just find that to be, and it's and the thing that I love about it is it's such a quiet scene, but there's just so much going on just below the surface, and there are so many implications to every word that is uttered by all three of them, and so it's just this, you know, and it, and it, it it's fun to watch the play with an audience because you really just see them all kind of you know, lean in like this. I mean. You know that that's a really that's a really enjoyable thing, uh, and you know I, I absolutely agree with uh, with uh, with Craig in, in regards to that that final like three or four minutes where where Proctor is finally able to just you know it, it make the right choice, do the right thing, and have just this the weight of the world lifted from him, and watching Craig hit that consistently every night is. It's just an amazing rush, uh, uh, and, and and one final moment, it, and it it, it it may be my favorite scene in the play is the moment where Danforth asks Elizabeth into the courtroom to ask if uh, Abigail and John had had a relationship. That that scene and that that moment where where Elizabeth's being pulled out and. You know, there are at least three different references in the play to how Elizabeth would never tell a lie. And here she is, this one time where she tells this lie, and John says, you know, he says, I I've confessed it. And the, the look on Elizabeth, well, the look on Jen Matthews' face, and, and just the uttering of, oh my God, it, it, it's, it, it's why I like directing. I mean, <laughs> to be quite honest, it's a, it's a hell of a thing, so. Uh, again, the play is The Crucible, the company's infamous Commonwealth, and we're at the Raven Theatre.